We join President Donald Trump and Hispanic pastors and leaders in the White House as they discuss their support of building the border wall and also express their gratitude to all President Trump has done in our country. There's been a breakthrough that's happening in America. Just last month, over 350,000 jobs were created. And think about this, over 5 million jobs were created in the last 24 months, and 60% of those were for women. Yes, they're excited, and they're sharing their excitement in the White House with President Trump. Take a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. It's so exciting to see what a lot of the media is not covering mm -hmm. is what's happening at the White House. The Lord told me in the beginning of what he was going to do. He's going to give the White House back to the people. And the President Trump has been inviting so many people to come. Yes. And this time he's invited Hispanic leaders, Christian leaders. Well, my, my name is Greg Lancaster, and this is John Ramos. Hello. And this is exciting days to see men and women from our country come together. And there are four things like, I'm for not being robbed. Yeah. I'm for like jobs. I'm, I'm for, for like, like safe safety. borders. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm for a strong military. And it's yeah. like, it, most are, just a few people that are, have mics and media and they're press, pushing their agenda. But it's so cool because because it's the, it's the lowest unemployment rate right now because of President Trump in America for Hispanic unemployment ever in the history of mm -hmm. America. The lowest African-American unemployment in the history of America. The lowest, almost 60 year lowest for women yeah. in America, unemployment rate. I mean, it's so, over 350,000 jobs were created just in the previous month. And it's just beginning. It's be just beginning to it's take huge. place. And that's so good. And everybody should be cheering this on because if, if someone you knew needed a job and they didn't have a job, the pain and the, the pressure and the things you have to do and to survive, and when they get a job, we should be excited about that's that. Right. And you know what? Hispanic Americans, Hispanic Christian Americans are standing for America, standing for God, and standing with our president. I want you to go to the White House right now. You're gonna see firsthand where he's doing exactly what God told me. God told me he was gonna be president in October before the elections, mm -hmm. but he also showed me that all of us, all of America would end up in the White House. It's the people's house. It's the people, it's your house if you're in America. And if you're not in America, you can come be a citizen of America and That's it can right. be your house too. Let's go to the White House with President Trump meeting with Hispanic Christian Americans talking about the future of our country and how they stand. Let's go, it's awesome. Well, thank you very much. We have some of the most respected and powerful, frankly, they have tremendous congregations of pastors and ministers anywhere in this country, and they've been uh, talking to me for a long period of time. Uh, you probably saw we went up 19 percent. I saw that just a little while with the Hispanic population. Part of it's the jobs, because they're doing record-setting jobs right now. Uh, but part of it is uh, what we talk about, the wall and security. And uh, these are just tremendous people. Many have been my friends for a long period of time. And uh, I thought we'd go around the table and say a few words, and that'd be great. We'll start with Pastor, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for having us here today. I have a letter to present to you from 150 Hispanic evangelical leaders, uh, simply saying uh, an expression of gratitude for your good faith efforts to work with Democrats and try to get everyone to the table to get things moving again. Uh, you've uh, done a very good job in being the leader we need you to be in extending a hand to them to come to the table. And we, we want to say thank you for doing that. And we want to say thank you for uh, uh, doing everything you can to get aid in a humanitarian uh, way for this crisis uh, where it's needed most, securing our borders, and providing for law enforcement and the Border Patrol everything they need, all the tools and resources right. that are needed. One thing you have not done, Mr. President, is manufacture a humanitarian crisis. It's real, and although many people began to declare repeatedly this is a manufactured crisis, uh, uh, being a pastor from Texas, I can tell you the human suffering that's been going on for many decades has hit a fever pitch, and I'm grateful that you have shown leadership to recognize it, to call it out, and to actually do something about it. So thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much, please. Mr. President, I'm Norma from the International Church of yes. Las Vegas. I'm a pastor there in the, not only in the large community, but in the Latina community. 
And about a week ago, I heard a briefing that you were doing where you were talking about um, the border security and also the humanitarian crisis. And I literally just, as I was listening to you share that, I pulled over to the side and I just started praying. And I was like, do, do the American people hear the statistics that the president is saying? Do the American people um, know what our reality is? So in that moment, I feel like I had like a truth encounter with what you were saying. And I started praying, Lord, let America have this truth encounter. I am an immigrant from Mexico and also daughter of an immigrant mm -hmm. from Mexico. And I, I just wanted you to know that you have not only my support, but you have the support of our community. Yes, there's, there's things that we, we need to resolve. I feel like you, you're doing an, an amazing job resolving not only um, you know, the, 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 the need for security, this crisis that, does, that has been going on for many, many years with, with the security of our nation and also with uh, immigration issues that have been going on for so many years. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. Um, and wanted you to know that you have our support. We'll get it done. Absolutely. We'll get it done. Uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Guillermo Maldonado from King Jesus Ministry in Miami. And we're here to support you, Mr. President. Um, you know, there's misconception in the public thinking that Spanish community uh, is for uh, illegal immigration. There's a misconception also that we want open borders. And dealing with people every single day, I see that our community support what you're doing. We don't want open borders. I've been in 70 countries preaching the gospel, and every country has laws in order. And every country we go, America has been so gracious uh, open the doors and open the, the, the doors for every person that comes. And that misconception that the Spanish people want open borders, that want, you know, no laws, that's not true. We're here to support you. What you're doing is great. The low, the lowest unemployment for Spanish people, 4%. Yeah. That's in, in history. Yeah. That's in history. Too. And that's why you have seen an increase of your support, the support of Spanish people to you. So we greatly appreciate Thank it. You, we pray for you, and we want you to know that you come with our support. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Please, Mr. Mr. President Trump. Thank you so much for all you for, for America. I'm Pastor Cristobal from the International Church Law Service, and I, I support totally what you're doing here at the Jim for America. Uh, concerning the, the crisis there at the border, I'm involved a lot with human trafficking and gang violence with the police department in Las Vegas, and we you know there's a crisis, and we want to tell you thank you for everything you're doing, and we support all that you're doing. And the gangs come from yes. south of the border. Yes. So right? Uh, yes, gangs Almost everybody? Yes. Almost all of them? Uh, most of them that come come to Las Vegas, they're trying to fit in somewhere, work things out, they can't get into the gang, so they start joining groups of uh, the gangs, and that's where that happens. And we, I work alongside the police department. We have our churches that are connected to the police department in different, city, in different areas of the city. And where there's a crime or uh, violence, we go out with them and uh, we, 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 we hit the ground with the police department there to restore uh, order back in certain areas. Right. Great job you do. Thank you. Fantastic job. Pastor? Hi, I am Pastor Marilyn Rivera and I am the First Lady President of the Hispanic Pastors Association in South Florida. And I just want to tell you that we pray for you, we are behind you, we want safe orders. And we're willing to stick with you for immigration reform, whatever. Let's work together. Good. Well, thank you. You've been fantastic. Mike, Mike Pence. It's just it's an honor to, to uh, welcome these wonderful Hispanic pastors here. We're grateful for their ministries. And, uh, uh, we're grateful for your prayers and uh, uh, the support that you have shown the president. Uh, record unemployment for Hispanic Americans, African Americans across the country. And, uh, the leadership that uh, you've expressed support for the president's brought uh, to our uh, nation's engagement uh, in this hemisphere means a great deal to all of us. But uh, thank you all for being here. And a big part of it is the economy is so strong that people are yeah. they're rushing our borders. Yeah. This is so important because we're all Americans, That's right. American citizens, and that you know, seeing people who care about our country and care about the people and that no matter what nationality you are, ethnicity you are, you matter, you count. And it's so awesome to see Hispanic Americans, Christian American pastors stand up and, and to just define the reality of that we're living at a time of great success, but we also need safety and security mm -hmm. for our country. 
and systematically saying that you know the, that we need safety, we need borders, we need yeah. uh, security in our nation. Listen, when we get back from this break, we're going to continue to hear this awesome encounter, exactly what the Lord told me was going to happen in October. You know, what I what I saw, what He showed me was there was just no room to anywhere. Everybody was shoulder to shoulder, packed out. All of us were there, all the different different parts of us. It was real cool to see, see some things. And I'm like, well, we was all there. And exactly what God said, this is, this is the people's house. That's why presidents come and go, but this is your house forever as a citizen right. you know, in America. And I think it's pretty interesting too when the church says sometimes says, there's no way that you could actually have church or a church meeting in a house. It's like the entire country's ran out of a house. Yeah. They, they moved it out of castles so that you could actually function in the context of realizing yeah. this, this is a place for us to relax. It's a nation that the government is allowed to have the authority over the people. Just seeing yeah. this is so encouraging. I mean, this kind of blows away the separation of church and state. Oh, the yeah. president of the United States Well, the lie invites, about separation of church and state. It is a lie. Yeah. When he invites these, these Hispanic leaders, pastors, yeah. like he's done all so many other pastors into the White House. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and Vice President Mike Pence welcoming yes. their prayers. Yes. This is what uh, unique about President Donald Trump is that I think for the first time we've had a president that has not looked at the Christian community as just constituents or a pastor right. as a gateway for a vote, right. but he sincerely cares about wanting to know these pastors. He wants to know their wisdom. I've heard him, you've heard him yeah. say, I want to hear from you. Uh, and, and he wants to take a gag, the gag order oh, off of them yes, by removing the, the Lyndon uh, Johnson yes. bill, the, you know, that, that, that particular tied everything this up. This restraining the church, this, this from thing that LBJ put on. Yeah. Lyndon the, Johnson. The Johnson during, Amendment. Johnson Amendment. So it's, it, a beautiful, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful day. I mean, he, de he took the power out of it and, and defunded it. Yeah. But I believe that if we still stay faithful to God during this time, that you're about to see original intent for, the, for, God's, for this nation is there's no restraints on you. You shouldn't yeah. be anyway. You should just speak the truth anyway. And it's refreshing yeah. to see these leaders there first as Christians, yes. second as Americans, and that's what's important, you yes, know? That's yeah. that's our identity. It's it's it in the Lord and it's as Americans. Well, right, so we're gonna bring you some more of this awesome encounter in the White House, but first we want you to comment below. What are your thoughts? Maybe that was your pastor. Maybe you know one of these pastors. Listen, they need to hear from you. They need to hear you shout out to them because they're gonna be seeing the program and they'll see that how you, you, you're you grateful for them standing up for the country, standing up for truth, standing up for what's happening in our nation. Give them a big shout. Also write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We love hearing from you. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win, you'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing, they're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you, you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we wanna bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. We're in the White House with President Trump and we have Hispanic pastors, Christian pastors, as the president has invited them in, as, he's, as God has shown me specifically, that President Trump would actually give the White House back to the people again, it's the people's house. And we have the Hispanic pastors there speaking on behalf of how good it's been for Hispanic Americans, yeah. the lowest, down to 4% unemployment, that's the best in the history of Hispanic Americans and they're sharing their thoughts. And you know, Vice President Mike Pence just shared part of the yeah. break, but we're gonna go back to the table where everybody's sharing their heart about where we stand and how they stand for America, stand for safety at our borders, and stand with President Trump. Let's go there down. Well, thank you, Coach Tommy, but also your Commander-in-Chief. And part of these issues is the safety of our country. Our country changed after 9-11 we're dealing with issues that we didn't have to perhaps deal with uh, in the past. But I want to specifically say that as a woman, I'm a pastor. I deal with victims of human trafficking, which is at an all-time high. And a strong America, uh, and when it comes to security and defending women and children, and even some men are trafficked as well, <laughs> against their will, the horrific violence and even death of thousands of people across our border is something that no one has grasped. And I'm 
very grateful for this. I'm also grateful that we're here at the table and that we have uh, uh, this dialogue and that you're open to it. I thank you for that. And I know you have a compassion for women, for children, for families. So for that, I am I'm very grateful and very hopeful of the future, Mr. President. Okay. You're going to have a great future. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Secretary Wilson. I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank you all for your leadership and your compassion for taking such good care of your communities uh, and for working uh, with the Department of Homeland Security. We'd love to continue to strengthen our partnership to learn from you, to understand what's happening uh, within our communities so that we can together make them safer under the government leadership. So thank you for being here. It's very important. Thank you. She's got a very easy job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reverend? Hello, thank you, Mr. President. Thanks for having me. My name is Mario Sandoval. I'm uh, a pastor in Waco, Texas, a uh, Hispanic community. And uh, we, uh, and there where I'm at, you know, we suffer, we see what the people will actually go through. And we're not for open borders, we're for secure borders, because we know that uh, it's going to bring resolution to a lot of things that people go through. And so we're here to support you. Today. Thank you, Reverend. Appreciate it. Pastor. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mario Bramnick, uh, pastor of New Wine Ministry and president of Latino Coalition for Israel. Um, we're really amazed by your leadership. Uh, what President Trump promises, President Trump delivered from the movement of the embassy to Jerusalem to uh, the appointments of incredible Supreme Court justices and now to what you're doing for border security. As Hispanics with the sore and the poll numbers, you can see that we do want strong border security that you stand for. And from the times we have the honor to meet you, I know you have a compassion for the Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. And it's true from your heart, um, all the times that we were able to be uh, with you, and as evidenced by the historic unemployment rate, as evidenced by your um, willingness to help with DACA and TPS relief, and um, we're, we're with you, we're praying uh, for you, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much, Pastor. Beautifully said. Thank you. Lourdes? Mr. President, uh, as President of Eres America, uh, my, my task is to bring leadership of the nation. As we have sitting here today, I work with every organization and uh, denominations uh, that are in the leadership with the Hispanics. One of the things that I see and resonates today is the fact that um, there's a great misconception. Media gives a major misconception of the Hispanic community and the support that we have for you. Uh, I can emphatically say your values stand aligned to the Hispanic community. And that is uh, the, what you have seen in the polls is that they have seen. No matter what the media says, they see that your actions speak aligned <laughs> to their heart's desire. And so they've got it all wrong. They, they're making my task more interesting. Uh, yet uh, the message is getting to our Hispanic community from it. truck drivers in Los Angeles. Yeah. You've got the Villarreal's names uh, following you, the Gonzalez's. You've got Hispanics that are truly yeah. supporting. And on um, this reality that we've had, back to President Calderon in Mexico dealing with the human trafficking was appalling. The, the catastrophes that we saw, we worked hand in hand, and we were never able to achieve what you've already brought to the table. For that, the Hispanic community in America says thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lourdes, and I will say we've made a lot of progress. And when we're given the right uh, ingredients, and we need that, we need the wall, we need other things, we need other forms of technology, uh, you'll see numbers that are even better. We've done a lot of work, a lot of great work, and I will say the numbers will get even better once we have the right, uh, the right things, including technology, by the way. But if we don't have that wall, and if we don't have a very powerful barrier, uh, it's all just a waste of time. It just can't work. Can't work. So we'll get it. Thank you all very much. Sir, why did you agree to end the shutdown? Why did you agree to end the shutdown? Why did you agree to end the shutdown? I think we have a chance, yeah. I think we have a good chance. We're going to work with the Democrats. We're going to see. Uh, and if we can't do that, then we'll do, uh, obviously, we're going to do the emergency, because that's what it is. It's a national emergency. These are Hispanic pastors and reverends and ministers, and they understand better than anybody. It's an emergency. It's a humanitarian emergency. Yes, yes. And we are going to take care of our border. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done. And crime is going to go down throughout our whole country, not just at the border. And the border is the least of it. It's what comes in through the border and permeates throughout the whole country. And you're going to see drugs drop way down because a big percentage come in through the border. You will see drugs way down. You're going to see crime go way down. 
So we're going to do it, and we're doing well, and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Mr. Thank President, you. This is so important, so awesome. Listen, enough of one particular drug, I believe, I believe it's called fentanyl, was seized at our borders just recently that it could kill, I think, 53 million Americans. Mm. That much fentanyl was, this, it was created coming over the southern border. And that's what uh, the musician Prince, he died from fentanyl, yeah. they said on the news. Yeah, that's, that, a, that's half of the po oh, oh, yeah, population working class. Yeah, the working class. class. 53 million people, wow. and they're, they're dropping it. They said it could be released in ventilation systems inside of... Oh. Uh, of uh, air aircraft, it could be put in the food. Of course, it's, it's going into drugs. And the thing about it is, is that it just takes a drop. And that much they see is enough, enough to kill 53 million. Listen, the wall's there for so many reasons, and it's not there fully yet, but I mean, it's not about what a lot of people are saying. Listen, God is about to pour out such a blessing. He's gonna differentiate between a sheep nation and a goat nation. And it's gonna be so important that 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 you put barriers up for people who want to live like a goat but benefit off a sheep instead of becoming a sheep. Isn't that what you do in your own house? It, yeah, and it says specifically <laughs> that, you know, God, Jesus said this is what will happen. He says that he will divide the nations up and some will be goat nations and sheep nations. In other words, ones that, that acknowledge God and they have, you know, that nobody's perfect, but just acknowledging God, humbling themselves and saying, listen, we want to be a nation under God. And other nations that say, I don't want anything to do with God, and it mm. creates some, something else. Well, that wall is going to be a barrier to people just trying to flood the, flood the country. And what we're going to do, we'll be able to do with the wall, we can say, we want you. Come through the door the right way because we need as many people as possible. We could take in tons of people. Sure. But come because they love God, they love the country, they love the values. And many do, many do. But the ones that are coming the wrong way aren't necessarily doing that. We're seeing some things go down that are not very good. Um, MS-13, we just saw just recently in the in, subways in, in New Queens. York, in uh, a new congresswoman's district, which she's had, there was no problem with immigration, illegal immigration, and they shot the man right there in front of everybody. You know, five times in the face. Five times in the face. And it's just, this is happening all over the place. And this is, we have to have compassion for every neighborhood in America, because truly, if we don't care about every neighborhood, then we have some issues about mm -hmm. it. And it's like, if everybody migrates to my neighborhood and your neighborhood's fenced in, and I'm suffering MS-13, what's going on, you should be compassionate saying, I'm having to live with these things. Yeah. And so I'm excited about where things are going. It looks like everybody that's in leadership regards with President Trump and the direction of his team, and obviously the Hispanic pastors, they care about all Americans right. and all of us being safe. And that, uh, you know, some people have walls already that they're asking, say not to have walls. It's just crazy what's going on. We want to hear from you. What are your thoughts? This is a big deal. Remember, the previous administration closed the door to God almost in the White House. You know, lit the White House up with colors that was totally a disgrace to God and some of the things that they did, letting people, uh, they closed off to people they, in regards to having, you know, iftar dinners versus having, you know, yeah. Christians come. It's just amazing what was taking place. And things have changed. Give a shout out. Comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com and just let them know how much it means for them standing up and that you stand with them and we all stand together. It's e pluribus unum, though we're many, one. What the enemy's been trying to do is, though we're one, we're many. They've been trying to separate us all. But it says on your dollar, e pluribus unum. It says on the presidential seal, e pluribus unum, which though we're many, we're one. Well, come back after the break because we're going to bring it home. Got some wonderful things to share with you after the break. Oh, looks like we're not going to have time for the break. We have the wonderful things to share with you now. <laughs> Listen, this has been an amazing, amazing program. Hopefully you call this week's program all together. You know, prophetic words about what's taking place in 2019 as Pastor Kilpatrick this week, you know, loose an a, a, a understanding, don't be distracted by the storm because God's fulfilling prophecy over. Satan's days are limited. He only has a seven seven year uh, stint and he's gone, you know, out of the picture. That's right. You know, we have prophetic yeah. words from uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland yeah, if you missed about it. revival and the things that the Holy Spirit is doing all across the world, which there was a connection between those two words. And also through Apostle uh, Pastor uh, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado yes. about 19 being about faith that God's doing this huge mega shift. The economy. And, yeah, the economies for you. Yeah. And the suddenly that God's going to do for you in 2019. We're saying, hey, declare them, believe them, because it's going to be a great year. And I want you to do that. I want you to, I want you to believe, because the Lord showed me people were not believing he's going to serve justice on the evildoer. Don't be one of those folks. Just get everything you see in the natural sense. Says, My God's going to bring justice down on the evildoer. Sad to say, it looks like some of that's even in our Justice Department, all of it. 
but they were saying things. And once, God, once that gavel comes down by God, I'm telling you, once that judgment comes on the evildoer, provision is going to be released in a powerful way, a powerful way. And everything Satan stole back from you, he has to pay it back, double what, mm. he, what he stole from you. But Seven a, times. <laughs> but a release of, of great resources. And what God wants to do in bringing in this harvest, he needs men and women positioned. That's why I, I wrote it in the book, I Will Fight. Find out the details. I want to just give it to you uh, for, for free, just for shipping and handling. But there's so many things going on. I don't want to pray with you before we go. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. I thank you for each of these pastors that came in and stood up for light and righteousness and, and for our president and for our country. And they care about our safety. Lord, we pray a blessing on their ministries, a blessing on all their people, Father God, and help us hear the call that you're declaring, Father God. And Lord, we ask you, end abortion in America. End abortion. Send revival. Send a third great awakening, we ask in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. How easy is it? Loving God, loving others, and leading others to do the same. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless. Thank you.